This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett and it is the Ramble and uh, we're uh, here until midnight Eastern Standard Time here in the United States of America. If you're watching us worldwide, accommodate for the time, you'll be able to tell whether we're live or not. We're coming to you live in several different flavors. We're coming to you live on uh, GabNet, the network, uh, which you can uh, get by going to GabNet.net and uh, clicking on either the tune-in bar or a bar right below it, which will uh, actually put a little player right up in the, up in the corner of your, of your um, if you have Chrome, up in the corner. Otherwise, if you have something else, it may have to be a different size or whatever, but uh, that's one way of just listening only to the audio, okay? Uh, also, you can, you, know, you can go over to iTunes, and they have those, uh, what do they call it, um, uh, networks there and you just go over and go look up great american broadcast network and i think we also have one under gabnet i haven't looked lately and uh, we have a live feed going there we have a live feed going if you just go to tunein.com we have a live feed if you've got one of those new fangled gizmos called an echo that amazon puts out you simply say to it uh Echo or in Alexa, a lot of people use Alexa. I have it, I have it so I can say Echo to it because if I say Alexa to it, somebody might come in the room and say Alexa, well, you know, referring to me, and then she gets all fuddled, befuddled. So I say Echo, but you say Alexa, um, uh, tune in, uh, go to tune in, Great American Broadcast. And it will go to the program. You'll hear it right on your Echo. So that's another way of getting it. Then on the TV side, you've got what you've seen, you're seeing right here, which is, of course, uh, our, uh, our uh, Facebook feed, uh, which goes out every night and is more trouble than it's worth. But I do it anyway because you people seem to like it where you can see me. You can also see the um, citizen panel and uh, crap like that. So... You know we're uh, we're we're in good shape. Let me. Well, I don't want to. Ch I, I was gonna. I didn't. I. Yeah, I guess I got enough headroom there. I don't know. See, here's the problem. I don't. I I could wear my jeans to do the show in, but then they they're, they're kind of you know they're they're not tight, but they're more restrictive. So I get comfy. <laughs> this is what old people do when they want to get comfy, folks. If you're watching us, if you're just listening to us. Alex just showed his uh, bottoms that he wears while he's doing the show. I also sleep in these things as well. Uh, anyway, so um, uh, th th those are just a few of the uh, of the various ways you can get a hold of us. Uh, let me see any other. Oh yeah, there are other ways that you can watch the show after it's done. We record this show as we're doing it. Okay, as we're doing it, we're recording the show, and. Um, we then take that recording and we make it into a file and it, it kind of cuts out the very beginning and you know, we have all the promos and stuff going when you first start watching this. So shortly after the show is over, within 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe more, maybe like a half hour, uh, the uh, program will appear not only on the Facebook Live page as a recorded version, but it will also appear on YouTube under Great American broad, yeah, Broadcast, or Alex Bennett. Just look up Alex Bennett in YouTube, and there we are. You can watch those on your TV set. You can go over to Livestream.com, and you can see that we posted it there. And we've also posted it on, um, what's the other thing? Uh, 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 Vimeo, which is the word movie conjungled around, but Vimeo. So, and then you can go to the gabnet.net site, and up in the right-hand corner is a clip. And if you look at the on-demand, there's another place where you can watch it. So there are so many ways to watch this show that, quite frankly, it makes me want to puke. Oh, if you've got Roku, if you've got Roku, even better, you can then watch the show as well. 
that was broadcast. We don't, uh, we're not running the, uh, we can't run the TV live uh, for some reason, or I haven't figured out how to do it yet. But uh, those are all the different ways that you can access us and watch us and let us get in your face. Now, in a little bit, we're going to go to our citizens panel. This is a little uh, format that we've come up with here where uh, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, upwards to about ten other people besides myself can be talking to each other. And beyond that, it gets a little unwieldy, so we'd like to limit it to like maybe nine, ten other people beside myself. Lately, it's been a little quieter than it was, so, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, it, it, it's some, but some nights we've, we've packed, we had, I think one night we had 13 here or something like that, and it was just too much. It was just too much. I mean, I, I couldn't keep people from talking over each other and everything. But at nine, it's pretty good. I mean, people, it, it, people have always asked me uh, with this new format that's never been done before in radio, um, is it difficult? And I say only if you don't mind being a ringmaster. But if you don't mind being a ringmaster, it's pretty simple, you know, and it just becomes a nice little conversation among people. And uh, hopefully we'll have a good, uh, good bunch of them tonight to give you a good example of what it's all about. Now, uh, let me see here. What else uh, do I have to say before we go any further so that you can know how this all runs? Uh, you should know that it's, uh, that, that's, that's our, our way of, of working on this show. And if you want to call, oh, yeah, if you want to call. See, I'm trying to talk, and I'm also trying to get something set up here. Uh, if you want to call, uh, just go over to gabnet.net. Everything you need to know about Gabnet is on gabnet.net. And over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on how to be part of the Citizens Panel, how to it is a click thing you can click to get Skype. It teaches you how to use Skype. It's even got a little button that if you've got your Skype open and ready to go, you can click on that and it will call us. So it makes the whole thing very easy. Now, let me say something to a lot of you. A lot of you, most people who listen to a talk show never, ever call it. Okay? It's a known fact. I mean, people say, yeah, I didn't get any calls today. And yet, uh, if the ratings come in, you see you've got tens of thousands of people. The reason is, most people never call a talk show. Uh, the people who do many times are what we call chronics, and uh, thank God for the chronics or we wouldn't have any callers at all. Uh, and uh, some stations, in fact, they have now a system where, to prevent chronics, uh, they have it so that if somebody calls, this machine tells you that they've already called once this week, and so you tell them they can't go on, or you don't even answer the call. Uh, so it blocks the call. But we don't do that. We don't do that. In fact, we like our chronics. We like the people who call regularly because they know how to do it really well. But that doesn't mean we don't want people to join us on the citizens panel who have never done it before, and that's probably you. Uh, and it's very simple to do, and, and uh, Skype is not a complicated thing to use. Uh, and uh, just make sure your camera's on. And uh, if you want Skype, you just go over there and download it. And you only have to give them, what, your first name, your last name, your email address, and a ID you want to be known by. In our case, it's GabNet Live. And um, it's very simple. And then you just simply uh, you simply call us, and uh, we. Uh, uh, it, it'd be best if you go up to where it says contacts, and then say add contact, and put in Gabnet Live, and then I will see that you want to be recognized and put in my contact list, and I can put you in there, and it makes it easier for us to get you on. We can get you on anyway, uh, but it it just takes a little more doing, and it's easier the other way. But don't don't worry about any of that. Just call us. If you've never called the show before, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, Boy, nobody's watching us tonight. What is this? It starts off slow, and then all of a sudden it picks up and whatever. Well, anyway, let me talk to you for a while tonight uh, before we get going, uh, and then I will lean back and just let other people talk. Um, there's not a lot. You know, I, um, I could come here uh, every night 
and probably spend the first half hour of the show bitching and moaning about the world in which we live, including uh, this horrid president that we have and, and this horrid Congress that we have and just the whole, you know, the whole mess that is out there right now. And I could do that, but I'm getting a little tired of it, to be tell you the damn truth. I mean, I would rather sit here and tell you stories about my life than, than to indulge you in me griping about stuff. Like last night I went on a, oh, I guess, 30-minute rant about the whole Me Too movement and how it's become fascist and how it's become, uh, kind of, it's become too, it's lost, its, it's lost itself and it's hubris. And uh, too many people are dishonoring it by making false claims or not waiting for their best shot. You know, I mean, Harvey Weinstein was a great shot. That guy deserved to get it. Everybody in Hollywood was hoping he would fall someday. And what do you know? He did. Ta-da! Yeah. Uh, and now they're going after Woody Allen because his... Uh, his daughter, his adopted daughter, um, uh, was um, claimed, Dylan Farrow, uh, claims that he molested her as a child. He has denied it consistently, and the police have looked into it over the years and found no truth to the claims. So, you know, but it's still, it, it, they're doing everything they can to ruin Woody Allen right now. And... Um, uh, you know, I have to say this about Woody Allen. If tomorrow he can't make another movie because of, of this, uh, he will have had a very storied career. I mean, you know, you look at some of his work and you say, that's great. Some of his work sucked, by the way. Woody Allen made uh, great, about every other movie was a great movie. The rest of them, eh, not so much. But there, there, were, there were some that were just Brilliant. And f very recently, too. In fact, the most popular film he ever made, the, most, the biggest box office he ever had on a film, was done recently. It was Midnight in Paris. Uh, and I love that film. It's a great film. And uh, so, you know, I mean, but if Woody Allen never made another film, uh, he can look back on his history of making films and say, hey, pretty good. But he may love making films so much he'd like to make some more. And, uh, you know, I just, I just think that until we see proof positive about anything, we, well, here I go again. I don't want to get into that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I did that last night. I did it the night before, and I don't want to go into it again. Uh, because I, then I just get really depressed and, and mad and weary. Um, do, do you have anybody out there that's sick? or that has something that's life-threatening? Um, I do. Um, my my ex-wife, Ronnie, uh, had uh, pancreatic cancer and they uh, operated on her with a thing called the Whipple procedure. Now, pancreatic cancer is one of those cancers that when the doctor finds out finally that you have pancreatic cancer, uh, they basically tell you to just go home and say goodbye to everybody because uh, it is the most deadly, I, would th I think it's the most deadly of the cancers. If not, it's number two. And, um, but she was a candidate because of the nature of the progression of the disease for a thing called the Whipple procedure. Now the Whipple procedure is in and of itself pretty disgusting. I mean, they take out part of your pancreas. Okay, we understand that. You got to get rid of the cancer. But then they take out part of your, uh, your um, spleen and a few other things, a little bit of your stomach and uh, all of that. And, and then they patch you back up and then you have to get better, which takes a couple of months for everything to start healing. So that, and then once she was through with that, they found some... Um, uh, some uh, cancer in her lymph nodes near the pancreas. Now, it may not gone past that, but whenever you see that, they go, well, it's time for chemotherapy. So now she's in chemo. 
But what happens with the chemo is it makes her red blood cell go down, so then they can't give her the chemo for a couple of weeks, and they put her in the hospital overnight for, uh, for infusions of blood. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, when I was married to her, I was a lousy husband. God, was I, in, in fact, I've since apologized to her. Now, I wasn't a lousy husband. I didn't beat her, you know. I didn't do anything like that. I just, I, I cheated, okay? I would, and I, that made me a lousy husband. I, I, I should have never gotten married in the first place because I was a, um, as a kid, I had low self-esteem, you know? Uh, and I, you know, like I was the Jewish kid in an all-Italian neighborhood, and uh, no girls wanted to go out with the Jew boy. He looked funny. When I came to New York, all of a sudden I found because I was Jewish, I suddenly became sexy for some reason, okay? Uh, but I had bad self-esteem that way. So when I finally started doing radio and women would come on to me, I found it impossible for me to turn them down. But by that time, I had been married, I was married to Ronnie. And it was just a terrible thing that I was going through. I should have never gotten married, but I didn't realize that I was going to change because of my notoriety, all right? And so I was a terrible husband. Uh, I was uh, not the kind of husband, you know, you would have wanted to have. Uh, my wife, uh, my current wife says, I would have never liked you back then. And chances are she wouldn't have, you know. I, was, I wasn't ready to settle down. So consequently, I mean, my, sec, my third marriage, I married somebody who um, didn't mind if I f screwed around. I let her, let her know that ahead of time. And she said, can I screw around? I said, sure, go right ahead, you know, uh, because I hadn't gotten it out of my system and I wasn't going to lie to somebody anymore. I hated lying, I, you know. Um, so where was I? Oh, so on this whole thing. So I, with Ronnie, I at one point I, I think I come back, just come back from Lillehammer, maybe was it uh, the, the Olympics, and I was in New York, and I said I'd like to have lunch with you, and she said sure, and we got together and had lunch, and I said uh, you're probably wondering why I wanted to see you for lunch, and she says yeah, and I said because uh, I want to apologize. And she said, for what? I said, for being such a lousy husband. I said, I, did, I was terrible. I hurt you. I was not nice. I was not a decent person. And uh, I, I really want to uh, apologize for that. And she said, apology accepted. I said, you know, I was a kid. Um, probably, you know, we had been really good friends is what it was. Very good friends. We met each other in... Uh, in the old beatnik days in San Francisco, and there was a place called the Old Town Coffee House. And um, uh, some friend of mine said, I'm gonna pick up my friend Ronnie and we'll go out and take a ride somewhere or wherever. So they pulled up and this person gets in the car and I figure Ronnie's a guy, right? But no, Ronnie was a woman. And so I'm sitting in the back seat with her and I get to know her and one thing leads to another. We start dating and Finally, once I went to Houston, Texas, I didn't, I didn't want to be there alone. So I said, come to Houston and, and maybe we'll get married. And we got married in Houston, Texas. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't the time for me to get married. It was the wrong time for me to get married. And I, what's terrible about it is we were such good friends. We really enjoyed each other's company. We liked each other as people. But marriage was not the thing we should have done. You know, we, right now, all of a sudden, years later now, especially since this has happened, I call her about once a week, once every week and a half, depending on, well, I have to be careful when I call her because she has the chemo, and then I got to call her a couple of days after that. She's due for a call, okay? I wrote her the other night and said, I, I call you, but I heard you were back in the hospital with a blood transfusion, and she said, yeah, so... Anyway, we, we are basically, we, um, you know, talk to each other regularly, and uh, we have uh, gotten this friendship going again. Uh, but a lot of it has been primarily because of her, of her illness uh, that we have become even, I guess, closer. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know what it is, why... Uh, you know, I, 
uh, why I want to put myself in, in this position because, you know, some, is she, I think she's going to survive. Quite frankly, I think all the, all the stuff points towards her survival from this. Uh, she doesn't have that feeling. You know, she gets depressed every now and then about it as well she should. But I think, I think the odds are good. I've looked into the, the, uh, the, the cancer magic eight ball, and it says uh, the future seems very clear, okay, or whatever it says with the magic eight ball. And I, uh, I really uh, um, um, am spending the time with her to, to just talk with her and just be, you know, um, normal. And I, I guess I'm trying to be the person that I wasn't when we were married. I wish I had been better. I don't, in a way, I don't blame myself because it, the fault that I had was based upon my own lack of self-esteem. And, and that uh, causes a whole different set of, of things. But anyway, so I, I have become very much closer to her than I think I have, have in years because of this. And... Um, uh, uh, so I, you know, I worry about her. And so I'm, what I, when I said to you, do you have anybody that's dying or that has some kind of terminal illness? Uh, you know, it, it really is um, um, something that you have to deal with. And I have another friend, Jack. Uh, Jack was in the hospital this last week, and I went to visit him. I've told you about Jack. He's a concentration camp survivor and the motion picture director and... Broadway theater director, Jack Garfine. And, he's a gr and I've just gotten to know this guy, what, in the last six months? He and his lovely woman, Natalia. And he is 87. So we go to the hospital because they've got him hospitalized because uh, he um, 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 uh, got, uh, got pneumonia. Uh, he actually had bronchitis or something like that, and then it turned into pneumonia. And when you're 87 years old, you know, if you're, if you're 20 and you got pneumonia, they say, here are the antibiotics, go home, call me in the morning if you're feeling, not feeling better. With somebody who's 87, it's straight to the hospital, lie there, get the tube up your nose, do the whole thing, the infusions. Yeah. I mean, um, it, 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 that's one, the horrible thing about getting old is uh, how they, uh, and I use the term, my mother had this term, how they potchkey around with you. That means they just, you know, they pick at you and they prod at you and so on. But I, I have Jack. I love Jack. I love Natalia. I love both of them very much. And I would hate to see anything happen to him. But I understand he's 87 years old, and I have to always expect that I'm one day I'm going to get a call. And what I've done by getting to know somebody that old is set myself up for... A bad day, a bad week, a bad month, a bad rest of my life of not having this person around me. And I do the same thing by I've gotten closer and closer to, to Ronnie. Uh, and, and, and there was always that inevitability as well. And so it, it's really kind of, I'm not trying to depress you with this. I mean, this is all part of life. But if anybody has gone through this, you know what I'm talking about, you know, that you don't know what the future is going to be. I mean, hell, you know, Jack could keep going until he's 100, all right? I mean, he, he's a spry guy. I mean, not right now. He had pneumonia, but a pretty spry guy. And uh, he's, 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 he's really in there doing his uh, being vital. Uh, and uh, he could live to be 100. He could, live to, he could outlive me, and so could Ronnie. But I still, every day, I kind of worry about a little bit, you know. And I, I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you something about me. I'm an atheist, as you know. Uh, but I do something that atheists aren't supposed to do. I say a prayer every night. What? Every night, I've done this since I was a child, I say a prayer. And that there are people who sometimes I mention in my prayers. Um... And it's, it's not like I think that praying, there's a God up there who's going to listen to me and then he's going to go, oh, thank you for praying. Yes, I will make it so. No. I think it's kind of like self-affirmation. 
that you remember these people, that they have something happening, and you want them to be taken care of. And so when I say my prayer at night, every now and then at the very end, there's a little spot where I put in the names of certain people who might be ill at the time, and I mention them. It's kind of an afterthought, and please take care of, you know, watch over. And I name Ronnie, and I name, now I've been naming Jack uh, in the last couple of days, although I, I think he's out of the hospital now, so I may not have to continue with that. And there's one other person I won't tell you, but he's uh, somebody who is very close to me through this program, all right? And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I, I just, live with the thought that people I love may go, but then again, I live with the thought I may go any minute. I mean, right here, I could suddenly, you know, have some kind of a heart thing and be gone. Uh, but anyway, so that's that's pretty much it. I, there's not a lot of people watching it tonight, watching us tonight, uh, but uh, I just thought, I, I, just, I don't know why I even brought that up. But it's something that I live with every day, and I go, you know, gee, I'd really like to uh, be able to have these. I, I'd like to be, a, 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 it's the old story about may, uh, <laughs> may you live 100 years and may your face be the last one, may my face be the last one you see, you know, uh, meaning I, I'm, I'm going to live longer than that. But uh, I just, you know, as you get older, you suddenly you hear about people dying, you have friends who die, and you go, oh, my God, you know. Because in this prayer, I also name people I know who have died, and that prayer is getting longer. So uh, maybe I hope I go before I spend a whole evening having to say this prayer because I've said, and bless so-and-so, and bless so-and-so, and bless so-and-so, and bless so-and-so. There are a couple of animals in there that I name. Yes, folks, I say my prayers every night. I, can you believe that about me? Something you probably, I don't think I've ever really talked much about this. I don't, think my, I don't think my wife even knows it. She doesn't know I do it. I do it very quietly and very fast. Okay. Well, anyway, let me open up the lines here. Uh, it's probably going to be a slow night tonight. Because I, I noticed that the, the 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 amount of people watching usually when I do these little little talks at the beginning of the show, uh, people uh, a lot of people watch it and they seem to like it. But I guess they're bored with it now or something, and we're right back to where we were. And which you know I I always talk about how I keep thinking about giving up certain things here. I my latest thought has been to give up the video. Uh, and to just go back to doing a radio show and just have fun doing that and leaving it in an audio as an audio show. But then everybody writes me and goes, oh, no, we love the video, do the video. And then I look over here and it says like 11 people. That doesn't mean there are 11 people watching, by the way. That means that there's a, I don't know what that means, but all I know is when the night is over, I get a, a, a readout of how many people, you, you can see it on the Facebook page, how many people uh, watched during the show or since the show, like over the last, uh, between all our various things, uh, in the last 24 hours, about 400 people watched last night's show, maybe maybe close to 450. Uh, over the weekend, 600, something like that, you know. So anyway, I, I just uh, um, just wanted to mention that, okay? Who is Rick? Oh, Rick, uh, huh. these people are calling. When did this guy call me? Let me see here. Missed a call from Rick at 10.21 p.m. Well, wait a minute. Let me call Rick and see if he's there. Uh, let me see if, if uh, Rick Renati. Well, I won't. I won't bother. Okay, stop. Okay, I'm stopping. No, I don't want to say anything to him. Anyway, um, give us a call. It's time now to call. Uh, the lines are now open, and uh, I don't know who that was. Somebody calling from a 510 area code. He's not in your contacts. Add to your contacts. Uh, I could do that. Okay, I'll add. I'll add uh, save this number to as a contact. Save. I, I have no idea what that. Anyway, 
I'm just waiting for people to call. That's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here just wasting away, hoping people will call. But uh, anyway, uh, Ray Renati, if you're call, if you're out there, call us. Okay, I just tried calling you. Uh, so anyway, I'm just sitting here waiting for callers. What else? Anything else I have to talk about? Well, here, oh, here comes Ray Renati. Son of a bitch. Hello, Ray. How are you? Hello? Hello, Ray. Are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Ray? Yeah. You can hear hey. me? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. You got a camera there that we can see? Yeah. You? Yeah, turn, Wait on, a second. turn on your camera. Yeah. Ray. Yeah, hold on. Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. you got to see this guy. He's going to look better five days dead than most of us yeah, look right now. let me redo now. this. I'll call you back. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, who else is on the on the line here? Who Who is this at the 510 area code? Are you there? <laughs> who is this? Alex. Yes. Hello? Oh, boy. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, you know what? I'll, this is Schmooty. I'll probably have to call back. Okay, call back. All right, she's got a problem. Hello, Phil. Are you there? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. We got... Oh, God. We got all these things going on here. Wait a minute. Um, I'm trying to add... Uh, I can't add Mike to the group. Okay, let me hang him up. Up on him. I just... You know, this is uh this is a really kind of wacky tonight. Um wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh let me see. Are you there, Phil? Phil's not there. And uh let's see. Oh, here's yeah, there yeah. you are. There's Mike. Uh and there's Ray Renati. Hello, Ray. Yeah. Bye -bye. Hey, hey. Ray, are you there? Ah, yeah, there yeah, you yeah. are. There you are. As I said, Ray Renati is a guy who's going to look better five days dead than most of us look right now. Uh, <laughs> you're, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thanks, Alex. Why do I keep getting a big picture of me? I don't want that. Um, yeah, hello, Phil. Are you there? Well, I'll be right back. No. Uh, what, what's what's your problem, Mike? <laughs> I don't know. Something's gone wrong. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Well, Phil Meyer is calling again. Are you there, Phil? He's probably trying to call us from Texas. Phil, are you there? Oh, is it going to be one of those shows again where I'm sitting here for an hour going, are you there, Phil? Are you there, Phil? Let me get rid of all these people here. Let me get rid of Mike. Let me get rid of Phil. Uh, here comes... Uh, Let's see here. Here comes an ex-girlfriend of mine. Wait a minute. Where, where, are you there, Schmooty? Schmooty? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you oh, now. Oh, man, I'm going to have to go get that Skype crap to get on the camera. Well, I guess I'll do that. Yeah, why? You can turn the camera on? Turn it on. Let's let's. I have, well, no, I'm not on Skype yet. Oh, you're not on Skype yet. No, so but how, I guess I will be on Skype. Uh, you, Maybe sometime yeah. tomorrow. Well, anyway, Ray Renati is with us. He's the only hey. one with a picture right now. Phil is trying to call us but can't get in. Mike tries to call us but can't get in. How have you been, Ray? You know, excuse me what? a second, Schmoody. I will get to you in a second. Uh, well, I'm. Uh, I had gotten a, a concussion <laughs> a few months ago. That's why I haven't been around. I've been recovering. You, I'm. I'm. I'm fine now. You got a concussion. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, in martial arts. I've been doing martial arts for like 20 years. Yeah. And now I quit. I quit now. Well, I would say after a concussion, it's time to quit. Yeah, I'm 56 years old and it's like, forget it, man. I want to live, uh, you know. Yeah. I'd like to live out the rest of my days with an intact brain. So um, I'm done with the with it. You didn't, Schmoody, you never did martial arts, did you? Yeah, I did. When I was younger, my mom put us both in it. Yeah. And then I, my dad was a boxer, so. Your dad? Yeah. But I don't actively, but I weightlift and work out. Yeah. Oh, you weightlift. Oh, you still, you still doing the whole weightlifting thing, and you still, you still, still could beat the crap out of me, right? <laughs> 
I don't know about that. But <laughs> once once I get the camera on, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. So this is. Oh my gosh! No, but starting next about. week. But, what, what what are you saying, yeah. Ray? Well, on, when you were on the radio, Alex, you used to talk about Schmoody a lot. Yeah, this this is Schmoody. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. I remember. Yeah. I remember the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, her name is really Kathleen, but oh, okay. somehow we came up. Uh, who came up? Who came up with the name Schmoody? Oh, uh, some friends of mine did when I worked at Target doing retail security, walking around like a shopper and busting shoplifters. Oh, I see. That was a fun job. That was a fun job. Yeah. So, I mean, so, the so they, the they called you Schmoody, but then you started calling me Schmoody. Yeah. And, and, you know what? It was from that uh, Seinfeld episode. Well, no, that was Schmoopy. That was Schmoopy. Was the sign? Yeah, but I didn't like Schmoopy. I like Schmoody. Yeah, because they, it, it, the big joke on the Seinfeld show was is that they called each other Schmoopy, and they, they how are you Schmoopy? Well, we I'm came up Schmoopy. with Schmoody before they came up with Schmoopy. I think so. I think you're right. I think you're actually oh. right. But oh, anyway, copyright infringement. We, we've been joined by Patrick Blazik, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Patrick, uh, 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 and and a uh, 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 a what what can we call it a Lesson to all of you that wheelchairs can be fun. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah. yeah. However, we, 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 because of his, well, you're not, I can't say you're immobile because you get around a lot, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a car, Patrick? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now, how long how long does it take you to get in the car? You got to you got to get in the car, and then you got to get the wheelchair in the car, right? Well, I I sent you a video, Alex. Yes. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I'm just it, a, I'm just asking you for the people out there. Yeah, it yeah. it takes me about five minutes. Yeah. Uh, break the chair down, throw it in the uh, passenger side. Yeah. yeah. It sucks when you go on a date because she got a backseat drive, but. You know. <laughs> what? Because you can't have somebody in the front seat with you? No, because I've got the wheelchair in the front oh, seat. Oh, I see. Until they get to know me and they know how to take the wheelchair apart, yeah. then we can put in the back seat. There um, you go. Like when I was with my ex, that's what she did. She broke it down, threw it in the back seat, and then you threw it right up front. So. Now, what do you miss more, just her in general or the fact that you don't have somebody to take the wheelchair out for you now in this weather somebody take the wheelchair <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah so ray uh ray 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 had a head concussion yeah uh you know who else had a concussion or, or is, is something happened to him uh hold on a second it's not that story it's the other story no that's a heaven spacey here we go. Rupert Murdoch. Did you hear about Mur about mm -hmm. Rupert? Uh, he is recovering after suffering what has been described as a serious back injury in a yachting accident. Uh, Vanity Fair cites three sources saying Murdoch suffered the injury earlier this month while vacationing in the Caribbean with his son on his son Lachlan's yacht. The 86-year-old media mogul. Uh, was helicoptered off the boat and was until recently recovering in a Los Angeles hospital. Man, they kept this quiet. Uh, he informed his senior management team about the accident in an email last week, writing, I hope all of you are having a great start 2018. I suspect it has been better than mine. I'm writing to tell you that last week I had a sailing accident and suffered a painful back injury. And while I'm well on the road to recovery, I have to work from home for some weeks. In the meantime, you'll be hearing from me by email, phone, and text, and maybe television network. I don't know. It all depends whether he sells it to Disney or not. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's the latest on Rupert Murdoch. Now, I, as wow. I, say, I know a guy who's 87. And, hey, if you're 86, I don't care if you're the healthiest person in the world. An accident like that, the recovery is terrible, just oh, terrible. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can tell you just being 56, I mean, I, I didn't even get hit in the head. 
I just can't take any more beating on me. I think it was mostly my neck because I went to a special doctor for my neck and I got better. Um, but like when you get older, your body just can't ha- cannot handle it anymore. Yeah, but I mean, how, do, how do you feel about that? Because it, it sounds to me like you're a very athletic person, okay? Uh-huh. That you're really in 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 the doing stuff like that and so on, and yeah, uh, and uh, you know, you 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 all of a sudden here you are not being able to do all the things you like to do. It's been really hard getting used to, um, yeah, because. I, it was not only that; it's like the camaraderie of of being. It was the Muay Thai, and like you have all your friends there, and you spar, and you do. And all of a sudden, it's just gone, you know. So and, and now I go to the gym and ride the bike and go to classes with a bunch of women, and you know, it's, just, it's a totally different thing. It's just like it's been really hard, honestly. Before you used to beat the crap out of your best friends and now you have yeah, to like, yeah, it was fun. You have to go to like a, what do they, my wife goes to a, what's I go that, to the YMCA. What's now. that thing where you pedal real fast? Uh, spinning. Spinning. She goes to a, she has a spin class. Yeah, I go do that now. Yeah. You know, for, for, when I first met her, I thought maybe she was knitting me a sweater or something, you know, but that wasn't the case. So, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see if Phil Meyer yeah. can get in here this time let's see are you there phil see Uh, Mm, not really (laughs) it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen for phil tonight um i'll I'll tell you about my uh that's jeff my young that's jeff in case you haven't met him before yet ray okay yeah yeah i know i I gotta tell you about my young son who's uh i guess 26 Mm -hmm. and he got himself a new job so he was pretty happy to have a real job. And uh, he and his buddies all went skiing before starting his new job. And, of course, he got nice and drunk and fell mm-hmm. and hit his head oh boy. and had a concussion. Mm-hmm. And now and he should have stopped doing everything. Yeah. Like you, everybody knows, but. He didn't, wow. and his friend goes, ah, just man up, and all that kind of crap. Oh, so meanwhile, he goes to, to work, and he can hardly think. Yeah, and this is getting really annoying with Phil. Uh, there, we got Mike. Uh, I'm here. We got Mike. You're there, Phil? Yeah, I'm on the phone. Uh, the iPad was not cooperating. I don't know why. Well, I, I have no idea why either, but, uh, you know, that's what happens when you try an iPad to do this with. You probably have better, better chance. Thought, how about I, your how about your iPhone X? Let's see if all that money is spent on that fucking thing can get you in. Oh, I, that's true. That, that's what I'm on. Uh, but I just called the number. You should just you, you should just uh, use your reason, you, cool. just use your Skype account, you know. I did uh, it on my iPhone. Yeah, I'm wondering before. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, I have Skype installed on the iPhone. Oh well, think, you know, uh, go and spend all you go and spend all that money on on an iPhone X, right? And you don't even install Skype. Are you out of your mind? Well, why do you call it X? You can't you can't count to ten. Well, no. Here's where where it really is is fucked up. So far as I'm concerned, with Apple, they can't count because they they went. Uh, let's see. We have the five, the six, the seven, the eight. We have the eight now, and now the ten. What so happened? What happened to the nine? The what? It, it it was so good it skipped the grade. I see. Okay. Yeah. Because if you take a nine upside down, it's a six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm in Dallas, Texas, and it's colder than shit here. <laughs> well, look, good for you. I'm, we're glad it's colder than yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I, tomorrow night I'm going to be home in a nice 56 degree weather. Mm-hmm. and uh, Foggy. Uh, I take the fog any time over this bone chilling cold. Yeah. yeah. It's good for you. So, I tell you, uh, I want uh, the global uh, warming. Uh, um, Mike, uh, turn your mic down a little bit, would you please? It's oh, you're, sure. very, you're very loud. Whenever you talk, it's very loud. Okay, is that better now? Uh, a little more, a little more, a little more. Okay. 
Okay. And when we can't hear him anymore, that'll be no. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> I heard that. Hey, oh, I heard Jesus. that. Hey, Mike, he, he does that to me all the time. It's piercing, man. It's piercing. Anyway, so um, um, yeah. So so anyway, so Ray, your life has been cut short, right? I mean, you're yeah. It's been a really. It's been four months of hell, actually. But I'm doing good now. Well, how bad was it? I mean, were you like well, loopy or something out of this? Yeah. Uh, this is the second time I've, I've had it's post concussion syndrome. I had it once before. Yeah. And last time it was just like cognitive stuff. Like I was just forgetting things and stuff like that. This yeah. time it like was screwing around with my emotions. Like I was full of anxiety all the time and, um, like just for no reason. Wow. It just sucked. Um, turned out it was my neck mostly. Really? Uh, yeah. Like, so I went to a special cervical chiropractor and uh it's been like night and day do you believe I'm in totally chiropractic you, you believe in chiropractic because my wife keeps wanting to send me to a chiropractor and no, I, just... I don't believe in the regular ones the yeah. ones who do like i'll crack your back and all that yeah there are special uh upper cervical chiro chiropractors it's called their uh part it's called uh n-u-c-c-a nuca just look it up yeah and they don't do any back cracking oh. or any of that stuff it's like, it's are like these physical the ones, therapy. Gray? Yeah. Gray? Yeah. Are these the ones that put pressure underneath, like, your skull with yeah. your thumb? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is fantastic. I had it it's done awesome. once. And, yeah, I'm going to do it again. Totally healed me. I, yeah. I, go, I have to go, like, twice a week now for a few months, but then after that, because I have so many problems. But I, I, can't, I can't even tell you how much... Like within two days, it was like night and day. I felt, I uh, yeah, I had that done once. Uh, by uh, the guy who is the head of the Pilates program, yeah, I told him I had trouble with my neck, and yeah. he did that. He only worked on me for about ten minutes. Yeah, and so it was night and day. Yeah, yeah, and hardly anybody knows about it. It's so weird. Well, I uh, years yeah. ago I had somebody uh, do something with me that. Uh, I haven't heard much about lately. Rolfing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Which is Ida Rolf. Huh? That'll help too. That helps some. It's very. Alive. It's very deep, deep massage. But no, I've got this. Uh, they, I've got they, this thing where my my feet are numb. It's not from diabetes because I don't have diabetes, but they're numb. And, and I, I I looked it up. It's it's probably a compressed nerve that I have. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she keeps wanting me to go to a chiropractor, and I just. I don't, it would help. Uh, you, but isn't there it, some? Isn't there some MD, some person who actually has a plaque on his wall that can do that? No, what, what, no you need to either go to a you need to go to an upper cervical chiropractor or a physical therapist who does upper cervical work. Yeah, well, the, but, the, but this because is all the nerves up here. There's no, so no, many no, nerves. No, 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 but the but the start here. The the compressed nerve is in my back, lower no, back. I, oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying is it's hard to believe, but uh, these nerves up here go all the way down. Oh yeah, they go all the way into your brain, all the way down your whole spine. Yes, uh, uh, we're and, uh, now. I now Patrick has his hand up, and I don't know why because he can't feel feel anything below his waist. So I have no idea what he's going to say. He'll adjust you. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the cervical spine, um, actually, it's just as important with the nerve that Ray is saying. Uh, like for me, I my injury is in the middle of my back. Therefore, everything below it kind of went to hell. Yeah. But with your neck, you can lose your, usually your arms. Um, that that's where the cervical spine comes in and people who break their neck and sever their spine, they become quadriplegic, which yeah. is you can't use your arms or your legs. So, um, yeah, your, your nerves run from your brain stem all the way down. And, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend a chiropractor just because I wouldn't trust them on me. But, um, you know, they're, look into different things i mean well i just you know, i just they, somehow i don't know chiropractic always seemed to me to be kind of a a phony science you know uh, well, and, and if it isn't if it isn't and if there is some worth to it trying to sift out the phonies from the real guys is 
is very difficult because well, the chiropractic association doesn't doesn't you know guard against well, that. You, you got to get it word of mouth, but there is some value to it because what happens is gravity just does a number on you over over time. Oh, tell me and about by it. aligning uh, aligning the spine and evening up the legs so that they're you know the same length. And, and just doing a number of things, it, it, it doesn't last permanently. For me, uh, you know, within a few hours, I'm back to where I was. Well, yeah, but, that's the uh, problem I, with, yeah. Sorry. Well, it, it, that is no, a, Go ahead, Ray. But th that, that's the problem with regular, you know, the, your standard chiropractor where you go in and they just crack your back and they all they do the same to everybody. Um, it just, it it's great for like short-term relief you know if you're an athlete you go in three times a week and get it all straightened out so you feel better but these uh, this upper cervical chiropractic thing is a completely different thing um where is your guy located he's in redwood city and there's another yeah. guy near you phil who's great he's in walnut creek i can get you really name. yeah yeah i'd appreciate it yeah but, okay uh, i'll get it guy i the guy I met. Here, here we go. This, really is an, no, this is another episode yeah. of Alex's uh, 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 medical uh, hospital. Uh, you know, Alex, just be sure to read. I, 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 I want to make sure we have a lot of good magazines. Are you enjoying the magazines while you're in the waiting room here? <laughs> hey, Alex, yep. I was going to mention the uh, when you were saying that, uh, you know, you were concerned about a lot of people and that, uh, you know, uh, you um, uh, you know, people are dying off. But that that's what happens when you get older. It used to, you know, when we were kids, you go to the birthday parties. Yeah, I know. You, my father you to used to say, my mother used to say that when you were a kid, you go to birthday parties and that's your main social function. And when you get old, it's funerals. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, that's. That's true, yeah. but that's that's part of it's part of getting old. You know, at least you get to go to the funeral. There's always food. Yeah, there's always food, <laughs> and and uh, uh, you know, uh, unless unless it's one of those where they're sitting shiva, that kind of gets depressing. You know, they're sitting on wooden yeah, well, benches. Yeah, well, I was gonna I was gonna suggest that uh, you become a professional minion uh, uh, sitter. Uh, By the way, the minion I, the minion he's talking about is a group of Jews who pray together, not a bunch of little short people who hang around with the guy in Despicable Me. Okay, so. <laughs> oh yeah, but the reason they pray together is, is for the dead. For the dead. You know they. they you know we yeah. we 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 have such um, uplifting you holidays. Like if anybody really wants an uplifting holiday, uh, uh, try try Yom Kippur. Uh, that is really an uplifting holiday. It is the most depressing thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. Oh, hey, we're going to go hear them do the Kol Nidro, which is the Song of the Dead. Okay? Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, who's who's going to do it? Celine Dion? Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's I really, I think that's one reason I'm not a practicing Jew. Um, mainly because I'd be way out of practice now. Uh, but uh, is because it's it's just so gets so depressing at times. There's so many depressing rituals. Hey, you know what? Wait, Alan? wait, wait, wait. Jeff is disagreeing with oh, me. I, I I think you're full of shit. The reason that you're not <laughs> because you won't pay the huh? you won't pay to be the membership. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, I mean, oh yeah, he won't pay the membership dues. <laughs> Pay oh, you have to pay to be a Jew? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. No, no, listen, listen, I got to tell you something. You know the day I stopped becoming a, a, any kind of a real Jew? I was in the, I was in the military. I, I was in the Navy, right? And uh, my father had died. And so it was the first year after he had died that it was Yom Kippur. And they do... They do the Kol Nidra and they do the, the actual, you know, the prayer for the dead and so on and so forth. And so you go to it for someone that you love, right? So I figured I should do that. And I was in the military. I was in the Navy. I was with Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. So I went to the closest uh, 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 shul, or I called up the closest temple, which was in Beverly Hills. And I said, uh, hey, I'm, I, uh, you know, I'm in the military and I want to go to uh, the, the services. Uh, how do I go about that? When is it? And so on. They say, well, it's, it's such and such a time, and you get here. And it's, it's at that time, he said, and it's $50. Oh, 
<laughs> and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm in the military. I don't have $50. And they went, too bad. <laughs> well, that, that was that temple. I'm sure a lot of them would, uh, wouldn't have charged you. Would charge you Especially uh, the, on the yeah. one year, uni- uh, the one year yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Well, I uh, my soul uh, saved. All it cost you fifty dollars. Yeah. I mean, what? I okay. So I'll I'll get the fifty bucks together. I'll, uh, I I can put a sign on myself. You know, we'll work for money to go to temple on <laughs> for Cole <Cole> Nidra. <laughs> you know. I mean. Uh, hey, I, in Beverly Hills, you'd get money. We probably would. <laughs> Um, but no, it just, uh, you know, it, it, and so after that, I just went, fuck religion. You know, I said, I can go pray anywhere. And that, that anniversary of my father's death, I, at home, said a little prayer, you know, yeah. and it saved me 50 bucks, right. which is a, in, in, among Jews is a very positive thing. So and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only know the first couple of words to that prayer. It's like Yishkadal, Yishkadash. And, yeah, uh, yeah well, and then uh, and and Duda, Duda. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yishkadal, Yishkadal, Shemay Rabba, Barei. No, that's the, I, I mix that up with the with the prayer for the wine, which is Barei Pri You know. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. So. And then the, you got, we got them for bread. Uh, by the way, last night I got together with a Jew in Texas. Yeah. Uh, Amy and I went out to <laughs> the dinner. She showed me Denton. Uh, Boy, and, I wish uh, I were there. That must have been the most annoying dinner between the two of you being there at the same time. <laughs> ah, we had a good time. She's a very nice person. Yeah, and we had a good time. Alex, and you didn't fight either. Yeah. How many times did she tell you no, she's? How many times did she tell you she's running for office? Oh well, you know, uh, she she's a very good campaigner. <clears throat> we went to an ice cream parlor uh, after dinner. Uh, we, we went to the square in Denton. It's a very, a, a, a very nice place. It's, it reminds you of like the 1950s, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, a quieter time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she says, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm running for office and here's my, uh, my card. Vote oh, for me. God. And uh, then we had somebody take a picture of us in front of the town hall and she gave him the card. Uh, you know, I wish my salespeople would be. Well, I mean, that, yeah, but, but uh, when, when's the election? It's about, it's about a year from now, isn't it, or something? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it's, you know, but she's, she, she, hey. every time I tune, I tune in to Jack's show, she's plugging the fact that she's running for office, you know? I know. And well, I you should, know, I, I, gave her, I gave her a donation, and I said, you know, the only person in politics that I gave more to was Trump. <laughs> How much money? But, did, how uh, much? How much money did you give to Trump? This is this is really wild because oh he, now you're you're, you're, you're you're sending money to a, a billion, uh, an alleged billionaire. So uh, let me hear. How much money did you send? Uh, well, uh, you know, there's a lot of charities that I give to. Uh, Trump. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't don't I parse it. No don't parse it with the other charities. Fuck you and the other charities. Right. How much did you give this I, I fucking? Gave him, uh, I think two two hundred and fifty dollars over like three uh, donations. Well, may I say that for one thing, you're very stupid to give that kind of money to Trump. But secondly, you're fucking cheap. Yes, I am. <laughs> because 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 you seem to care so much about Trump, and then to send him two hundred and fifty bucks, you know, that's not giving him fifty pay. more than you sent them. That's that's not going to help. That was two. What I didn't. Plus, I bought a hat. You bought a hat. Make yeah. America great again. You know those hats. Yeah. Those hats made everybody who was a Trump fan look like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> hey, everybody who was a Trump fan was a farmer. You know, think about it. His fans came from Iowa. Yeah. What does that and, say and, to you, you Phil? Know, what does it? What does it say to you? Well, I'm I'm a Jewish farmer. Oh, huh? <laughs> okay. Hey, you, you, you know, I only donated up until the time that he got elected. All the uh, now that he's been elected, I don't give him any more because uh, you know uh, I wanted to see him elected. I did my part, yeah. but still, I get all of these requests for uh, for more, but uh, they're not getting. This it. is like like uh, what's his name, the guy that uh, you sent letters to or whatever. Uh, 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 pop off, yeah, yeah, pop off. 
Uh, he's like Popov. You know, you, you sent him some money or you did something, and now he keeps sending you stuff over and over. You're not getting anything from Popov anymore, right, uh, Peter Popov? No, I, I haven't gotten anything for over a year now. I think me mailing back all of his bullshit and then the pennies and... I think that was enough. You know, I as I we we had you. You were our test subject when I was over at Sirius, right. in that we had and you. you lost. <laughs> we had you write him, <laughs> and and have him send you all these prayer cloths and things like that. You didn't have to pay a penny for them, but he didn't have to pay a penny for them either. They were so fucking cheap, and uh, I you 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 know you you were our test subject because because if you could wind up walking because of Peter Popov. Then I was going to proclaim him the Messiah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, thing- I told Amy, I told Amy, I'm probably your your first Trump, uh, the first Trump supporter that made a donation to you. <laughs> Who paid for dinner? Uh, I, she wanted to. I wouldn't let her. Oh, I see. So not only this is how stupid he is. Not only did he not pay for dinner, did he pay for dinner? But he also gave money to her campaign. Yes, well, uh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, Mike had his wait, hand up. Did uh, did you get your uh, free water that he's giving away? Free water. Oh, no, 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 no. he's talking oh, about, no, he's talking about Peter Popoff. This is Amy. Pa- uh, Popoff. He's, yeah. not, he's giving away free water. Hey, listen, if, if Amy can make uh, Patrick walk, I'll vote for her, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's um, it, it was... I'm a I'm an old school kind of guy, and I don't let women pay for dinner. You know, it's Why? just uh, because that's the way I am. Well, I I, I agree with you. I actually had a th- feeling about things, although now nobody's making up for it. But uh, uh, years ago, I used to take everybody out to dinner, all these comedians out to dinner. And why did I? Because when you went out to dinner, when you said, "Let's go out and have some dinner," and then the bill came, I figure the person who makes the most money pays the bill. Yeah, it was just, and I was yeah. always the guy who made the most money, so I paid the bill, and I didn't mind. I mean, I, I wrote it off as a tax deduction because they I, were I also, I also feel if you ask somebody to dinner, yeah, that uh, then you know, then you pay. You know, yeah. it's it's like you asked, and you know, and that's uh, you know that it's my thing to do yeah. it, uh, and yeah. you know, and I, I usually. Almost always pay for dinner. Yeah, well, that's you why know, everybody wants uh, to go out to dinner with you. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to have anything to do with you. Uh, no, the <laughs> trouble is, even though I pay for dinner, nobody wants to go yeah. out to dinner with me. <laughs> Let me ask Ray something. Uh, Ray, yeah. uh, I, I know that in the last uh, couple of months you've been in somewhat of a semi-coma one way or another through this concussion. <laughs> Has well, that spared you? Has that spared you any of the pain of having to put up with Donald Trump? No. You can't escape it. He won't let you. No. It's everywhere. Every morning you, you open your phone, there's the news that's Trump everywhere. I, Twitter I, Trump, TV Trump, radio Trump. Yeah, well, I, I keep saying I keep saying uh, that uh, I kind of feel like the Godfather 3, that when I thought I was getting out, he pulls me back in. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's exactly what Trump does. He just, yeah, you know, you want ends. to avoid him. He dominates the news it, every day. I'm yeah. getting so sick of hearing him, who, seeing who, him. Whose fault is that? What? Is Trump? And that's all they no, talk about on the Trump's late night fault. shows. It's the news. Bull it's crap, the news. Phil. Morning. It's great bull crap. It's a great news. No, the news. Trump's the, news the one. Media. It's the biggest bull crap around. No, just my, because the, his the course he let loose. Six o'clock Look, every morning he sends some piece of crap. Yeah, I know. To, but to the they world. have five to guys report on it. On See that? That's their job. They 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 don't have to. You know, they well, can ignore that stuff. Why would they? Uh, they could just report why, on important stuff. Why, why does he uh, have to put out? Now he's giving a reward for the best fake news. <laughs> New York Times, Washington Post, Time Magazine. And somebody else might win. Did Gabnet apply? We're better, better that it, for that idiot. Well, we Why should have been in the running. Yeah. Oh, bull. Oh. Well, you know, I mean, I uh, hey, look, I I'm not, I, I should love Trump. Okay, I should love him because I I I just looked, and the stock market today went 
bazonkers again and has gone over what twenty six thousand. And uh, I, I look at my uh, Vanguard, and just this month alone, I think I made three or four thousand dollars, and I should be very happy about that. But quite frankly, I know that there's a price to pay for that. It's like making a bargain with the devil. Yes, Jeff. Well, you know that's Bitcoin. Bitcoin wait, 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 hold on, Litecoin. hold on a second. Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, uh, I can't see. I, I wonder how many of us think that the stock market is going to crash pretty soon. Of course, uh, I think it's, absolutely. Yeah, um, next year, not this year. Well, not I, this year, I think maybe, this year it's still going to climb. Maybe I should. You, maybe I should cash out. <laughs> But you can never tell, though, with the market. Well, you know, it may crash, but it could crash where you go down several thousand dollars, but it doesn't go back to where it was, you know. But the, a lot of the, a lot of this has nothing to do with Trump. Um, although, um, today, Apple said they're going to open up a new campus in the Bay Area and hire 2,000 yeah. people because they get to keep the money wow. here, you know. Uh, but my question is... You know, how does that affect me? Then I'm not. I, I nobody's offering I'll me a radio you how it job. Me. Huh? I, I was in a, I was in a class today, and they were saying, "Oh, well, you know how you hire people and you find people that you know you need yeah. uh, people under forty in your business." Yeah. And so I said, "You know, I'm in an area where I've got to compete with Google, Facebook." Uh, and uh, and Apple and all these other employers that are looking for uh, millennials to uh, to be in their yeah. business. Uh, I said I got to compete with these guys. They don't want to sell carpet. They, you know they want to work for Apple. Look, you know, wait a minute, uh, Brian. Brian, it, it, uh, mute, yes. mute yourself when you're not talking because there's some noise going on there. Yeah. Look who's here, folks. Brian. He hasn't been hey. with us since the first of the year. Where have you been, Brian? Uh, I just uh, been working and uh, just playing, uh, gorging myself on uh, video games when I'm not. Uh, oh, well, I'm not out we love ha you know we love time. having you on this show. So please don't don't. I thought I were worried about you. I didn't you know, know Are you what driving happened. Driving an to you. ambulance or something? What's he that? he delivers uh, he, he delivers <laughs> organs from dead people. Oh, cool. <laughs> She's like, the organ bus driver. Isn't this, isn't this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to it, the happiest place on earth? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and uh, do you have any organs in the car right now, or are you going home? No, I'm going home. Yeah. What, what kind of organs did you uh, send around today? Well, I... Really, it was just uh, prescription medication on one deliver and one uh, delivery. Another, I'm not sure what it was. It was just uh, probably like machine parts or some shit to somebody's house. Oh, and uh, uh, that could be a uh, drug deal. <laughs> yeah, it could uh, be a drug deal. Last was uh, the last delivery I made or pickup rather to take to uh, the terminal I work from was that of uh, cord blood, umbilical cord blood. Umbilical cord blood. Mm, Correct. Yummy. If you, have, if you ever have anything left over, like liver, do you go home and have like liver and onions or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, Not man. if it's human. <laughs> oh, okay, just checking. I don't know. It's great to have Brian back. It's like the whole the whole all, the uh, uh, whole crew is getting back together <clears throat> again. Uh, and he, and if you're watching on uh, on Facebook, he's driving home, and he always takes us in the car with him, which I think is terrific. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, the guy you said about the liver, about implying that I eat the organs that I uh, yeah. Sorry, don't sorry. Just because I'm, just because I'm gay doesn't mean I'm Jeffrey Dahmer in the making. It, right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I didn't even go there. But is liver good with with <laughs> is human liver good with fava beans and a good Chianti? Uh, good to tell you. That's yeah, that's what I was thinking. Exactly. Well, we talked about uh, Rupert Murdoch recovering. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and um, yeah. uh, hold on a second. Let me see here. Um, but uh, the another story is that police are investigating a new allegation against Kevin Spacey. Oh, yes. The racism. 
Yeah, right? th this is uh, authorities confirmed today they've launched an investigation into a new allegation of sexual assault by Kevin Spacey. It reports that Scotland Yard, you don't fuck around with them, uh, revealed a third inquiry into the actor by police in London. The new investigation centers on an alleged assault on a man in 2005 in central London borough of Westminster. It follows two other investigations into alleged sexual assaults by Spacey on men in the south of London brought uh, in the borough of Lambeth in 2005 and 2008. The report quotes a statement from Scotland Yard, wait a minute, uh, Yard saying, on uh, the 13th of December we received an allegation that a man sexually assaulted a man uh, in 2005 in Westminster. This is an awful long time ago. No, oh, just Jack the asshole ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? that? That's that's Brian. That's Brian Spencer. Jack the asshole ripper. That's uh, that's what he should. Welcome back, uh, Brian. That's what Ke Kevin Spacey shall forever be known as from here on in. Officers from Child Abuse and Sexual Offenses Command are investigating. Question is, uh, can they get him to come to England to face the charges? I guess he's safe as long as he's here. Uh, he already came there before. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, by the way, Jeff, we can't see you right now. I don't know, maybe, maybe, you, went, maybe you went somewhere, you're hiding uh, but uh, so that's the latest on on uh, on the latest in, in molestation news. Uh, and um, uh, let me see here. There was one other thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ann Curry. Remember Ann Curry? Remember she got fired over at the Today Show and there were always rumors that it had something to do with uh, uh, with um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matt Lauer. And and. They say that one of the reasons why the ratings went down on the Today Show was because of the feeling that Lauer had something to do with Curry's exit from the Today Show. Um, well, she's talking now. And um, among other things that's happened today is Don Nash, the show's executive producer, and uh, he, uh, a very close friend of Lauer's, he was an intimate ally of Lauer's, uh, is is stepping down as the uh, executive producer of the Today Show, and it will be succeeded by Libby Least, meaning all four hours of today will now be overseen by women. Are we going a bit? It'll be a lot like the View, huh? It'll be a lot like the View. Like but also, I just thought of something. Instead of Matt Lauer, it could be Matt Plowher or Matt Plowher <laughs> Plowser. But anyway, so today, today. Um, um, they, uh, uh, what's her name, Ann Curry, uh, went on the CBS Morning News and talked about her situation at the Today Show, noting that she was not surprised to hear about Lauer's alleged misbehavior. And it also, uh, she said that uh, uh, Curry's high-profile exit from Today was widely regarded as having been handled poorly by NBC. If you may remember, I think she only had the job for like four months or something like that before they got rid of her. Uh, and uh, some observers attribute Curry's ouster to Lauer. Uh, and she says that the culture over there was terrible, to say the least. Uh, so now it's being run by nothing but women. It is hosted by nothing but women. And I think it's time for us guys to, child, uh, to uh, charge discrimination. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to work there. You wanted to work there? No, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, yeah, but you do voiceovers, don't you, Ray? I do voiceover. I'm an actor. Yeah, yeah. I do voiceover. I do uh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna be in a play in a, downtown in a couple months. You, in but San you know the thing about Kevin Spacey? I was taking an acting class that he was doing online. Yeah, and, and I'm I hadn't finished, so I watched uh, yesterday. I was watching one of the uh, classes, and he and he was talking about. He's able to sleep well at night because he knows that he all, he he treats people well, and uh, he was just going on about what a great guy he is and how <laughs> why he's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this thing was made like a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. And I, I couldn't believe what I was listening to. It was like, it was so, it was the weirdest damn thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, 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 the funny so, thing is, Trump says the same thing. <laughs> you know, how, 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 he's such a great guy. Well, no, you know what it was. I'll tell you what they did when when well, people yes. when people started uh, saying he was racist. Uh, he he started saying, "Well, I'm the most unracist guy you've ever met," and blah 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 blah. And I've always been good to the 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 coloreds, uh, you know, whatever he said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, all I could think of was, you know, whenever I'm asked about that, Alex, are you a racist? I always answer by saying, "Yes, I am," because I'm white. And that I can't totally empathize with someone else, just like they can't empathize with me. There are certain gaps where where you have a hard time empathizing 100%. I said, so yeah, there's part of me that's racist, sure. But I, I don't do anything that would hurt anybody because of it. And whenever I find something in myself that appears to be racist, I go do very heavy work to get rid of it. That's how he should have answered that question. Then everybody would have said, okay, you know, he's a pretty solid guy. But when a guy goes, I'm the most unracist guy you'll ever meet, you know, uh, it's just not the answer you give. Yeah. No. I would have said something to the effect of, uh, well, you'll just have to draw your own conclusions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many here? But your answer was very good, no, no doubt. No, I but just, that's that the answer. If I, you know, if I were in his employ and and watch him watching over him uh i would have suggested that to him but of course he wouldn't listen to a suggestion like that you know that's not in his wheelhouse so let's see here tim is calling okay we'll add tim to the crowd here so whenever folks you're watching the show and you see a telephone there that means that somebody's on the phone they're not calling us using skype and tonight we have Two telephone callers, one being Phil Meyer, who's in Texas, and the other Tim. And uh, we have Ray Renati with us. We have, uh, uh, let me uh, do this so you can see, Patrick Blazik. Uh, there's Mike, and uh, there's Jeff, and, of course, Brian in, in the car there. So all you people can have an idea of who these people are. Hello, Tim. What's on your mind? Good evening. Well, when you were talking about being a racist, because I'm white, too, uh, we don't when you're not, when you're white, you don't go around thinking all day long, hey, I'm white. But if you're not white, you pretty much know and have to deal with whatever you are all the time. And there's no way we can empathize. Well, I, I believe it or not, uh, I, where do you live again, Tim? I forget now. In Michigan, about two, no two hours yeah. north of Detroit. Yeah, well, here, I live in Harlem, and I'm pretty well I'm aware that I'm white. You well, know. That's true. That's true. Uh, that and, is a little different. And I got to tell you, uh, I I feel a certain prejudice by blacks towards me. I mean, I understand it, but you know, I think racism goes both ways. Uh, and Correct. Um, I find that I am tr treated slightly differently. If I brush up against a black person in the supermarket, they they what do you think you're doing? Back off! You know, I'm going. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I just brushed up against you you know if i were black i probably wouldn't have gotten that same reaction you know so i so did, I, I i lived in baltimore for a couple of years and it was good education for my kids you are right it's a lot different it's a lot they were different. a minority in yeah. high school yeah so i don't feel that i'm you know I, i'm not aware that i'm white all the time you know uh, uh and and but i i do believe that uh you know i mean i i i i I just think that by virtue of the fact that you're not black does make you racist uh, because you're, you're going to have misapprehensions about things. You're not going to understand totally what it's like to walk around in a black skin. And if, if he gave that kind Correct. of answer, I think everybody would have been a lot, you know, would have gone, oh, hey, he's pretty cool, you know. I mean, that, that's, that's okay, you know. But no, no, he had to give the, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, a racist. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I give, I give jobs to Negroes. Uh, yes, Jeff. I was, I was going to mention it to Ray because he might remember the theater uh, that there used to be. I think there was a movie about a guy who acted to be black. He covered his skin. Oh, black, black, like like me. Me. black like me. Black was like me. The, the novel. Was it? Yeah. There was a play and there was a movie. Right. There, there was a movie yeah. about it. I, was I, it a good play or not? Uh, I, you know, it, I, I, I don't know. I've never seen it. 
Uh, and I, I was never on Broadway. I saw the movie, and I always thought it was rather condescending. In a the way. novel's good. The novel's really good. Well, what the guy did, it's a true story. He yeah. uh, darkened his skin. How he did that, I don't know. Maybe right. he sat out in the sun a lot and was able to pass for black. Um, you know. Um, you know, I saw White Chicks. <laughs> I, I would love to redo that, that movie. movie. I would love to redo that movie and have the guy in, like, minstrel blackface. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, Ray, and then... Uh, so uh, last year I directed a, a play, it was two black people in it, it was a two-person play, and man, I knew I was white the whole time, uh, they really were prejudiced against me, it was horrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It, it, the play turned out great. I, I know the author. I, I, that's why I did it. I've known her for seven years. And I, I didn't even realize it was a black play until I started directing it. It was an awful experience for me. I mean, I liked directing it, but the way they treated me was just horrible. Do you feel you know, I think there's degrees, too. Like, my grandparents were sharecroppers in Pacifica. You know, they came from Italy. Yeah. They weren't paid. They weren't paid. They were like, they lived, they lived, they were kind of like slaves. <laughs> it's like, my grandfather just took off and went downtown and got a job at Ghirardelli because he couldn't stand it anymore. Um, so there's like, there's degrees of whiteness too. I think you know it's like, yeah, uh, oh yeah, you could be yeah. a wasp from hundreds of years back, or you could be like me, where my grandparents came from Italy and they were dirt farmers. Well, you know, I, I, I somewhat, you see, I mean, the the funny part is that part of me goes. Well, I understand why they feel this way towards a white person, because their whole life has been conditioned that the white person has been an enemy. And, uh, and so I understand that, and that's the part of me, I guess, that isn't racist, that I will allow them that, that birth. Uh, I, I've got to disagree. I think it's on economic uh, levels and not color levels, because if you, you're... Uh, uh, having a, uh, a friendship or relationship or uh, an interaction with uh, with a highly educated uh, black person, I, I don't think that people see color on, on those levels. You know, all you see is the person. But when you have an economic issue where you have people that have less and, and people that have more, uh, well, but don't, don't, don't you find, though, that you have that problem if the person is white and happens to come from a different economic uh, group and happens to be from a different educational level? Uh, not, I don't, but other people might. Oh, I, when I meet up with stupid white people, it bothers the shit out of me. Well, I'm not talking that they're stupid. I, oh, I'm, oh, yes, there's uh, people of, uh, uh, of, of minimal means that are white oftentimes yes, well have look the look, look the, the, the so that, that supports my statement the, that it's economic and not uh and not color wise the real segregation uh in this uh in this uh world in this country and in this world actually has always been economic you know yeah and 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 i think that the color color or race lines uh really vanish when uh, when you're uh, dealing at a, at a different level uh, economically, no, they don't. Uh, no, they don't. I don't think. I know. I know a person. person. I know a black person yeah. uh, intimately, because we're involved in uh, legal actions and so on. Uh, that is, uh, it's a great deal of money and a great deal of reputation. And I have always had the feeling he hates me because I'm white. Always had that feeling. Well, m money the, is one thing, but education and 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 worldliness. I know you your your guy is he hates you because you're suing him. Well, no, no, I'm like not suing. I'm not suing him. No, that's not the reason. I I had this feeling in the beginning, you know, that I was always, you know, uh, I always felt like I was the white guy who came into this neighborhood, and when a white guy comes into this neighborhood, there are black people uh, of money and of a position who will take advantage of that. And that's exactly what they did with us. Well, once you get to know the person, it's much rarer that there would be a color line. Uh, you know, when you get, to, uh, you get to know them and their families and you, and you become friends, color isn't as, uh, as important as, as the person. And, uh, I, and I think you're sounding, I think you're sounding, uh, you're sounding like a white guy being condescending. No, no, I'm not being condescending in the least. 
uh, you know, I, I worked with a lot of black guys that were cops. And and you you had a your life depended on what they did and and vice versa and uh, you know you really blur the color lines. Did the black you, cops? You did it, 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 let me ask you: Did the black cops beat up on white people? Uh, we didn't beat up on anybody. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah we I, just used enough force necessary to affect the arrest. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Phil. No more. This is Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Based on what you're saying, uh, we need to have President Trump spend some time one-on-one -on -one with some dreamers, <laughs> and he might look at the whole situation a lot differently. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. He spent... Well, Tim, Tim, you're right. Uh, you know, when you're exposed uh, to people, uh, it's like road rage. When you're in the car and uh, you would say and do things possibly that you would never do face-to-face -face Yeah, but to let me ask you this, Phil. And let me ask you this. How many black people do you think Trump has had a meaningful interaction with in his life? Well, uh, probably that Amorosa, but I, I don't know, you know, because I don't know Trump. I mean, I've never met the man. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know. He never uh, traveled in the kind, he never traveled in the kind of circles where he would have to deal mm -hmm. with black people. Well, that's the problem. You know, it's a matter of education. Well, that is the problem. If you travel to, well, yeah, if you travel in those circles, you'd be educated to the worldliness of other people. The guy, the, that the you know, you know, you know what he is. Nobody said here. nobody has said this about Trump, but he's a xenophobe. He's afraid of anything right. foreign. Right. Uh, well, no, I think he's America first, regardless of. Whether you're foreign what, what or is, not. What is America? What is what is it? Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. What does America first mean? America first in what? Norway second. Well, Norway second. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> that used to be on the banners that the KKK carried <clears throat> during their marches. No, I, 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 <laughs> no, what it means to me is that he wants to protect the citizens of America first regardless of what color they are and and what ethnicity uh and you know i i believe that it, that's that's where he's coming from uh you know i don't have personal knowledge of it but that, that's where i think he's coming from I don't know. as long as they look like they came from norway <laughs> well yeah well it's it's funny you know he, he speaks in half sentences because if he would have said you know, uh, how come nobody from Norway wants to come here, uh, but only the people that are live in shithole countries? Uh, so, you know, I think he, I don't think he communicates very well, you know, yeah, and, okay. and it could be because he's from Queens. Wait a minute, isn't Trump got to be a little racist in shithole countries? Isn't that being kind no, of racist? Not they are shithole oh, countries. Shit countries. Have you been there? I've been. I've, no. No, have you not. been to any of them? I've been to Haiti. I've been in Dominican Republic. And there are amazing still, places. Wait, There's a big difference, Ray. There's a big difference between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And they're on the same I've been island. to both. I know, I've been to both. Yeah. And there and there are some horribly poor places in Dominican Republic. Yeah. Believe me. I mean, really oh, poor. It's just that the population is smaller. Okay. When all right, all right, Phil. Point. I've been there. I've been there a lot, and I'm telling you, there are places in Dominican Republic that are just as poor as Haiti. It's just that there are fewer people. It's hor yeah, like they live. They 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 wash and shit in the river, the shithole river. They live in <laughs> yeah. cardboard shacks, just like in Haiti, and uh, you know. I, but the thing, the thing is, is when he said shit house, and what he was talking about was their plumbing. See, people don't understand that. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> That's my that, that was the latest explanation of what he said. Yeah. yeah well, I was they're, talking about their plumbing. So far, so far, he's Lisa's uh, admitting he used some. Some. Wait, wait a minute. We, 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 we know. We know. We we know from having uh, listened uh, to him now that he at least admits to saying shit something. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You know the term they use is merit based immigration, which is, to me, is kind of like a poll tax. Like, we only no, want to. He, 
He wants they the want doctors. the educated he white wants... people, not not these people from the. And it's actually the people from the poor countries that made this country. Why yeah, would we want? You know, why would we want smart, educated people coming to take the good jobs in America and not let the other immigrants? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! A woman by the name of no, Vicky Chang writes. A, a woman by the name of Vicky Chang. I'll get to you in a second, Patrick. Uh, it says on our, our you know, uh, the uh, uh, chat line here, uh, Alex, you're pricing the blacks out of Harlem. Sad. Yeah, Alex, uh, you're making so you much money. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Vicky, Vicky, how can I be pricing blacks out of Harlem when I'm not paying any rent? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Yes, Patrick. I want to say um, Meryl Streep must have had a very good influence on some of our Congress people, specifically uh, Cory Booker, mm -hmm. because with one hell of a uh, show that he put on of bullshit yesterday with the fake tears and the whiny ass. Just well, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. I happen to think Cory Booker's pretty solid, if you want my opinion. Like Wait a minute. Look, what, Patrick? I think it's a fucking asshole by what I saw. I don't think any of that was any more sincere than Meryl Streep saying, I had no idea that Harvey Weinstein would fucking everybody in Hollywood. Yeah, but she's trying to win another Oscar for that performance. You have to and understand that. So, I mean... He's a fucking knob. I, I watched him, and I watched the, the fake outrage, and it, you could tell that he was playing for the camera. Did you see, I, uh, what's his name, Jeff Flake? Is that his first name is Jeff, uh, the congressman from uh, Texas, I believe, uh, who yeah. uh, uh, is not going to be running again. He gave a speech on the uh, at, in Congress today about how much Trump's a sailing of the fake news is exactly what Stalin did and exactly what Hitler did. And and that he was and also even what using Ar Aragon's he was, doing and Duarte's doing. Too. He, yes, he mentioned uh, Duarte as an example, another example. And he's that, exactly right. And that he and, uses the same verbiage that these people and, used. Did, didn't, Ray Renati has, has didn't not. Trump hijack the word fake news? Because at first it was referring to the Facebook things that were fake news from Russia. And then he then he started using the word fake news to refer to regular news. Because the fake news was originally all those Facebook ads that were that were fake news. Yeah. So then we lumped them that. all together to purposely confuse everyone. Yeah, That's anybody what, anybody we we didn't fake know news awards that today? the Facebook what? What? He put out the fake news awards today. Uh, did he really? I, did, uh, uh, no, uh, no. It was it was it was on GOP dot com. Oh my yes. god! And it was eight news stories that were retracted by the news the news media, so they were incorrect stories, not fake. And he's lied about what two thousand items, according to the New York Times. Yeah. He lied about his height and weight. Can you believe oh, it? Yeah, he was one pound under obese. Right, one no, one, one pound. Yes, correct. Yeah, right. Oh, just have, he weighs more than two hundred thirty-eight pounds. I'll tell you that. Yeah, uh, but is is two what is two hundred forty pounds obese? Is that it? That's yeah, two thirty-nine was obese. Yeah, but is that dependent upon your height? However. Yeah, the, the body mass index. Yeah, yeah. So but they made sure he was just under. Three. What? His six life is six foot yeah, two. but I'm six. I'm six feet, and I weigh two hundred and fifteen pounds. Okay, I do not look like I am not. I, I don't even have a gut. Like you're telling me, he's six three with that giant gut, and he only weighs two hundred and thirty eight pounds. Well, no today, way. today I'm up to a hundred and I'm t t today I'm up to one hundred and ninety pounds, and I'm six feet tall. You know? That's 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 wearing his girdle the wrong way. O Obama was taller than him in a couple pictures. Obama's six foot one. Exactly. No, no, no. no, Trump is six three. I know that. So now he's lying about well, height. I guess those stubby. Yeah, I guess those stubby. I guess those like. stubby fingers make him look taller. <clears throat> I don't know. Yes. Don't, yes, don't Jeff. Know. Jeff's got his hand up. I get. I get tested all the time as going to the hospital. And you know what? After a couple of years, and I'm seventy two, 
and the president is what, 71 or something like that, you shrink. Well, everybody yeah. does. He's 6'2", yeah. Yeah, and you know what? People lie all the time because what are you going to say? Oh, I used to be 6'3", and now I'm only 6'1". He probably was 6'3". He is 6'2", now, though. I just looked it up, so yeah. he probably lost an inch. Yeah. yeah. At least. Could be more. Yeah, I've lost a half an inch, you know, uh, but I didn't have that much to begin with. What? But what are you talking about? I just gained three I'm, inches I'm, in the I'm, last five I'm minutes. Five eight. I'm just five eight. Five eight. I'm like five seven and a half. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. So, uh, I thought gravity. I'm taller than you, Phil. No. What happens to What's you that? is, I believe, your spine compresses. Is what happens. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And so you. Uh, but I don't know how tall I am now. I think I'm still pretty much six feet tall, maybe five eleven. You know. Uh, but I was always like six feet tall was my height. And my weight, uh, of course, you know, always fluctuated. Astronauts go into space and they grow three inches. Listen, I'm going yeah. crazy because in the last week or so, I, I, uh, I keep put, taking off weight and putting weight on and taking it off and putting it on within four pounds. But I go crazy about that. And I shouldn't even pay attention to Yo -yo. it. Yo-yo. No, it's fucking winter. Yo-yoing? No, I, I mean, yeah. I, right today I was 190. Two days, three days ago I was 186. Two days before that I was 188. You know, just back it's and water forth. Water weight, Alex. It probably. Water, it's, it's, yeah. Water I weight. wonder if you, if you got some of those inversion boots and hung upside down for a couple hours every day if you'd get your height back. <laughs> I you know, I, those it. things get old. I had I had uh, an inversion table, you yeah. know, where you lay on this table and it tilts. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Uh, they feel good, but after a couple of uses, uh, they're nothing but a towel rack. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, what, what, what were you doing that for? Were you trying to make yourself taller uh, or my something? My back hurt. Oh, my your back hurt. And my back. Yeah, so it would take the pressure off of it by inverting. Oh. Okay. To well, me, it doesn't fact. sound safe, though. Oh, no, it's safe. Uh, no, they're safe. There's nothing yeah, safe, safe. Yeah. That's why bats never get any shorter when they get older. What? <laughs> Don't... They... Bats. <laughs> bats? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they they're they hanging down. upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that. I know all that. <laughs> What was I? Uh, I heard a funny joke today. I was watching an old Dick Cavett show, and he had George Burns on, and George Burns was telling about a joke that somebody sold him, and then Fred Allen wrote him and said, "Hey, stop using that joke. That's my joke. I own that joke." And he said, "But I bought it from this other guy." And the joke was, "Why does why does he why does it why does this duck fly backwards? Because he wants to see where he's been." Okay. <laughs> And he said it was such a good joke. It, it set up the act for he and Gracie, and it was just a it was it a very important part. And so he calls the guy who sold him the joke and said, "Steve, you know, uh, Fred Allen is telling me this joke got stolen from him. Uh, apparently, you you gave me a joke that you also sold him." He said, "Okay, well then I'll ch then let's just change it a little." So uh, why was the duck flying upside down? So when they get shot, he goes up rather than down. <laughs> That is good a joke. No, <laughs> actually, I think it was a better joke, actually. But and I probably didn't do it right. I didn't do it. It goes right to heaven. Yeah, while well, he was flying on his back, so that when he gets shot, he goes up rather than comes down. Right. Yeah. So. Gravity. Yeah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be here all week. <laughs> Tip your waitresses. <laughs> uh, Who invested in Bitcoin? Anybody? No. 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 Uh, Matt. One of the callers, Matt. Uh, 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 he invested yeah. in Bitcoin, in Litecoin. Light, Litecoin. And I, I, yeah, and Litecoin, as well as Bitcoin, took a 30% dump, uh, was it yesterday? And uh, they're saying that Bitcoin will be down to 1,000 shortly. And the guy yeah. who invested in Litecoin, the guy who invented it, yeah. sold, all of his, sold all of his holdings. Really? Oh, so I didn't even. I didn't. I invented Amway. It's an Amway scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. I didn't see this news about well, Bitcoin taking a dump. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 370. Yeah, it was like 370 30%. million. It was yesterday, I believe. 
Let's wow. see here. You know, you because and, uh, they're they're huh? That's a shithole currency. <clears throat> Well, yeah, yeah there it, is. there's a little graph here, and it was going all the way up, 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 and now it's, beep, it's coming down. Went down about. They're worried about the stock market being too high now, too. It's ready yeah. for a, 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 a drop. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens. That's going to happen. It's got to happen. You, you know all the meetings that Trump had with the CEOs of all the corporations early this year? Yeah. You know, what he, you, you know yeah. what he told them? He said, you get my numbers up. For for employment, unemployment, and you guys buy a bunch of back buy back a bunch of stocks, and I'll give you your tax break, and it worked. Wow, wow! I uh, don't that. believe that because there were so many of them that wanted to get out of their uh, 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 of that council. Uh, it was uh, some sort of advisory council, and, and you know, fifty percent of them quit. No, but I'm talking about the other meetings that they had, not the advisory council. But did you see what they had in this in the in the budget proposal? They want to vote on it tomorrow. They want to get a, no. an additional tax break to the insurance companies, just as part of the continuing resolution. Oh, really? On top of the tax cut they already got, another fifteen to eighteen or eighty, fifty billion or something for the insurance companies again. Well, what, it's, uh, speaking of uh, Bitcoin, which, uh, you know, I mean, we can only talk so much about Bitcoin. It goes down. Who knew that was going to happen, right? <laughs> My you son know. kept telling oh, me to also, buy Bitcoin. I mean, uh, it I told him no. it, it, people compare it to the tulip market in uh, Holland mm -hmm. uh, many centuries yeah. ago, in which everybody, for some reason, started investing in tulips for no known reason. But uh, tulips were going for incredible money, and all of a sudden, one day, somebody said, wait a minute, what the fuck are we doing? And the bottom fell out of the tulip market. There, there's, there's another market that uh, is a real squirrely one, and that's diamonds. It's totally con uh, controlled by the De Beers family. Yeah. And, uh, and they, they control the price. I thought it was uh, Tom yeah. Shane. <laughs> yeah, Tom Shane. <laughs> You've got Shane a friend. You got he's, he's just your friend in the diamond business. <laughs> 2121 yeah, South El Camino Real. <laughs> I actually got to know Tom. I, 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 I actually, I actually got to know Tom Shane. This is a guy who has a. a uh, anybody who lives in the Bay Area has heard of the Shane Company, uh, selling diamonds. And I, I like the guy. The, the guy was. He's fun. in Colorado. I saw him on TV in Colorado. Yeah, no, but he he was uh, he was he was kind of terrific. You know. He's still around, man. Yeah. Yeah. I've been hearing him since I was a kid. He must be a hundred years old by now. Yeah. Uh, by the way, my radio in the radio business. Uh, I was talking today to uh, my friend uh, um, um, uh, Stephen Pearl, and he was talking about how a whole bunch of people got let go over KGO in San Francisco, which is at one time was the biggest radio station in the Bay Area. Yeah, uh, and again. Huh? Did they let him go again? No, this was, was a two years ago you're talking about, right? No, they just let, what's his name go? Um, it, Ron Owens? Ron Owens. They is, did? Is gone. Well, they wanted, yeah. to let him go, but they wanted to let him go the last time, but he had a contract they couldn't get out Well, of. apparently the contract ran sick. out. Doesn't he have Parkinson's or he something? He has Parkinson's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, he, uh, yeah. He, he, he says he's going to be doing like little commentaries every day or something. But they're replacing him with a, with an, with a show that's out of town. Their morning show, which is Armstrong and Getty, who are the guys who've been there in that town for 20 years and never gotten ratings. Uh, Those but they're, guys but, replaced you but, at CNET. Yeah, they're they're cheap, yeah, right. but but they're cheap. They come out of Sacramento, and so the Sacramento station pays right. for them, and they just run the show. And now uh, they also got rid of Brian Copeland, who's an old friend of mine who was a comedian who started yeah. becoming a talk show host. Got rid of Brian. Wow. Brian's and, a friend of mine. Brian and, Copeland and did a uh, on New Year's Eve. He did a big comedy extravaganza down in uh, 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 I think it was like Hayward or something. Well, that's only because uh, I don't do one at the Palace of Fine Arts anymore. But anyway, the, he got dumped, uh, and uh, uh, they're replacing him with some out-of-town talent that's they're just sending the signal into San Francisco. So that whole station, pretty much its <coughs> staff, is not in San Francisco. Right. So and that's I, what... Th they, thank they you very much, folks. That's, very much. That, that's what's happening to radio, and Cumulus is on the edge of bankruptcy. 
they got delisted on the uh, on the stock market. So it, it's it's uh, it's not not a pretty sight in radio in San Francisco right now. No, uh, they got rid of all the people they, they, they were paying a lot of money to, like you know you know a few years ago, and now they're they're just purging, purging, purging. Well, constantly. yeah, I mean they weren't paying. I'm sure they weren't paying Brian a lot of money because no, they weren't. No. You know, no, I doubt. Uh, it. And and so the, the whatever money they're going to save. Uh, they they're gonna lose as a result of not having local programming, you yep. know, and yep. and you Patrick, you always tell me about where you live, that you have a lot of local programs there, yep. and that's what you like about the stations there. Yep. And those are programs. No, they are they are <laughs> they are. Yeah, but uh, no, there is something to be said for local programming. You know, like I on this show, I can't. I'm sorry, I, I can't do a weather forecast for San Francisco right now. I probably could, it's but every, everybody iPhone. else who's listening wouldn't give a shit, right? You know, I can't talk yeah. about some little issue that's going on in San Francisco that may be a big issue in San Francisco because it wouldn't be a big issue to the entire audience listening to me here. That's the difference between national broadcasting and local broadcasting. And local broadcasting has always been very important because it's been the it's been the, the 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 landline that people have to each other in a given community, and that's disappearing. So I used to listen to KGO all the time, but when after they fired all those people like eight or nine years ago, wherever it was, yeah. or seven years ago, I stopped listening. I totally lost interest. I didn't yeah. want to listen to these out of town people. Right, right. It's just, yeah. yeah, and then and then they and then they hired some people uh, that were really low low grade. You know, I mean they were okay but they weren't at the same level as the people they got rid of right and, uh, right and you know, well uh, you know uh, you know he, when the feet when the Feeney took the station over he was the one that fired all of those people yeah uh, kevin yeah and then they fired then kevin died yeah well and and you know and i uh, you know, if you remember, I talked to him about, you know, he said he liked you and, uh, you know, he, he was interested in talking to you. Yeah. I, I almost got your job there. Yeah. Yeah. But, and um, then, then, wait a minute, but it's the story of my life. I, I, the one place I maybe almost could have gotten a job, the guy drops dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, his, uh, you know who else died last week? Um, uh, Edward Hawkins. So the Edward Hawkins singers and. Terrell, uh, uh, Kevin Matheny's father, Terrell, uh, when he was at WMCA, he got a gold record for breaking the Edward Hawkins singer's Oh Happy Day. Yeah, they passed out uh, those record gold records WMCA. like, they passed out those gold records like crazy, you know. Hey, uh, Phil, were you? That, but, but what's funny is I work for Terrell Matheny, the guy's father, so if I could have worked for him, I would have worked for the father and then I would have worked for the son. And, and the son. Yeah, and I, and I knew Terrell Matheny, but, uh. Uh, uh, Kevin was uh, in Detroit, and he was a friend of my friend Barry. Well, Kevin Matheny has a very uh, had a very bad reputation for one thing. Uh, he's the guy yeah, he that was, Howard uh, Stern kept calling <laughs> garbage breath, or what do you call him? Something? No, pig face. Pig, pig face, face. Pig breath, or whatever. And pig he breath, was the program yeah. director at the station at WNBC here in New York that uh, that Howard was at. And so when they did the movie, the program director, of course, was played as this. This horrible person who he used to refer to as pig face or whatever. I can't remember what he called him. I don't follow. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I thought that was grossly unfair. But that's Howard, you know. Uh, yes. Hey, Phil, did you used to be in the business? You, you always know so much about all these things. Uh, no, not really. Uh, oh, okay. my, only pay, my only paid gig was working for Alex. Oh, okay. And, uh, but uh, but the uh, well, I, I have friends that were in the business for many many years that Alex knows, uh, it, like Heavy Letty Bronstein and uh, Barry Martin. You know these guys have been in the business a long yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Every now and then I get a note from Lenny Bronstein, like on my birthday. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's good at that. Yeah, he's very good at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's living in Las Vegas now. Yeah. But I mean, uh, uh, no, and now you you worked for me, but I wasn't paying you, was I? Yeah, you actually gave me uh, minimum wage. <laughs> did I? Did I actually? Was and I actually it, physically paying you? Cause, absolutely. Because when that happened, and, my business and, manager you know, usually took care of that that part of my business. You well, know. I think I got paid from Century. 
I uh, think so. I don't think I, I in those days I didn't pay anybody. There were, later on I started no, paying. No, no, I got I got a check from Century Broadcasting. Yeah, yeah and, because, uh, because I, was, I almost didn't cash it. And just was going to frame it, but uh, I, I ended up cashing. Because the it. main, per, ma- the the main person I had on my payroll was my my bodyguard. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, 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 no, it was Century Broadcasting. There. That's how popular sure. I was, folks. I had a bodyguard. Uh, you were popular, Alex. Yeah. You were, big, you were a big yeah. deal out here, man. Yeah. yeah I, I used to be a big shot. Now look at me. You know. Uh, wow. Well, yeah. But, uh, hey, listen, I every now and then I get letters from people saying, you know, how much they enjoyed what I did and uh, how they enjoyed that kind of radio, and that makes me feel very good, you know, that I did something that at least lasted with them all these years. I listened to you every day. Yeah. It was really good. I loved your show. It yeah. was great. Brian, how are you doing? You're, yeah. you're in your house now, right? I am. Are, ah. are you, are, oh, hey, you know what I found? If you, if you want to go on a low-carb diet, I found... Literally chocolatey uh, rice bar things. I don't know what it's called. It's got a total of one net carb in it. Wow. And they're rice? tasty. And they're tasty. I sent carb. away to, I got 12 of them Eric. from Amazon because I like them so much. Yeah. You know. And, and, What's and, the brand? I can't remember the name of it. It's got some funny, you know, one of those carb right or whatever yeah. thing is. But they're very, they're very yeah. good. You know, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah I've, been, I've been turning, I've been taking my uh, the guest room and turning it into my 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 room. Uh, I bought a 4K TV set in there, and I just bought a Apple TV 4K and put it in there, and I put in the surround sound system with a, and it's uh, so I can go in there now and uh, close the door and just avoid the whole world. So. Do you like the Apple thing as much as the Roku or uh, uh, I I I thing? you know the, the latest one I like it it doesn't do everything the Roku does believe it or not but the Roku I can play my network drives Apple won't let you play your network drives on Apple TV unfortunately uh, it's a cat but, with a butt in your face yeah well cats uh, always yeah. like to put their butt in your face look at that. <laughs> That's their way That's of saying. That's a shithole cat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hey there, Brian. You really want to lick some pussy? <laughs> it's a male I don't cat. think he does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Well, if I wanted to lick some pussy, I'd go for, uh, I'd call up yeah. Kevin's face. Well, I hope, uh, you know, Ray, we're, we're coming towards the end of the show, but I, I hope that you will call us more often because we certainly enjoy having you here. You know? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm going to. Now that you're out of your coma, <laughs> and 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 you're better, and yeah. um, uh, yeah. then, uh, and Ray, don't forget to send me that guy in Walnut Creek. Uh, oh, information. right. Right. How do you? Do I have your email? Uh, uh, I think we're friends on Facebook. Okay, I'll just either. Okay, I can do it on Facebook or on here. So that's cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah just put a messenger. Thanks. By the way, I, uh, next time we d- uh, tomorrow, uh, I want to get into this whole thing with Facebook. They're they're being criticized a great deal now, and it 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 kind of makes me even question using Facebook, you know, because of their lack of uh, interest in protecting their audience. And I think the protection of your audience is the most singularly important thing that any company can do. And, Unless uh, you mean all the information that they're gathering and then using to sell it. Well, stuff. no, it all has to do with the whole Russia thing, too. That they weren't as active yeah. on that case because they didn't want to ruin the money. Because, you know, yeah. they, uh, got, they got 2 billion people on, on Facebook. And so when they sell advertising, they can make a lot of money. And so when uh, if Russia wants to do something, do you think they want to turn them down? You know, and yeah. and the question is, they should have, you know, and they should have been more protective of the American public and of the American uh, g- uh, voting system, but they didn't. Hey, listen, there is our theme. Thank you so much, Ray. Want to see you more? You bet. Uh, I'll, be ba- I'll be back soon. Patrick, on- uh, the more we see you, the better the show gets. You know, uh, Phil. Even though we couldn't see you tonight, to have a good time there in Texas and. Uh, 
You know, yeah. thanks. I'll be flying tomorrow. Talk to you Friday. Yeah, and uh, let's see here. Uh, also, thanks to uh, Tim for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, the lovely and attractive Mike from Sacramento, California. Thank you, Mike, yep. uh, for your Sacramento. your participation in our program. Of course, Jeff. Wonderful to see you, and of course, Brian. Good to see you back again. Let's make this more often now. You had the funniest line of the night. Anyway, everybody, why don't you all uh, like wave goodbye, wave bye bye, and uh, we can say good night to everybody. There they are, your citizens panel, ladies and gentlemen. And here I am, your host and obedient uh, servant, Alex Bennett. Uh, what's next? It's uh, Jack Bishop and Amy. Uh, Jack and Amy with the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the intersection. <laughs> I'm trying to do two things. I try to sign everything off at the same time, and I have a problem doing it. So uh, I have to uh, go say goodbye to people and hang up so that the next show can use the uh, Skype lines. Anyway, uh, I'll, uh, they're, they're next, and then Connections is here at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. I'm Alex Bennett. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.